Math Pen students, how are you doing? So this is an exciting video because we are starting our new book. Can you believe it? All year we were in that other book and it was awesome and I'm so proud of us. And now for some fun financial mathematics. If you know me well, you know I love talking about finances and I love talking about money and this is gonna be a little bit lighter math for us, so I think you're gonna enjoy this. Um, so I want you to turn in your books, please, to page eight, and we're gonna start talking about unit pricing. So I've written down uh, the definition for unit price. Unit price is the price for one unit of an item. And some examples of that are listed in the book here, and some would be, for example, price per liter, right? You might buy your milk uh, per liter, you could buy oil per liter, typically liquids, right, liters. Uh, another example is per meter, right? So you could be buying maybe, typically you'd probably see foot, but um, flooring, you know, they could do that per meter, that kind of thing. Uh, another one, they just have like an item, and here they say 50 cents per apple, so per thing. You sometimes go to the grocery store and you pay per item, okay? So sometimes it can be weight you'll pay in the grocery store. You'll often see here kilograms um, is the price that cashiers usually use. So like bananas, for example, you pay by the weight or the mass. Okay, so those are, I want you to know that the price for one unit of an item is called the unit price. All right, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna work through some of the questions on page eight and nine together, and then I'll assign some for you to do from the check your understanding section. So let's start with number one. They show all these lovely pictures of milk. Uh, milk right now is actually off of the food guide, but to each their own. All right, so it shows a four liter one, a one liter, a 500 milliliter, and a 250 milliliter. So I'm gonna erase this for us now. Okay, question one says, find the price of four different sizes of milk containers. Copy the table into your notebook, Record each size in column one and each price in column two. All right, so it starts with container size. Container size, and then it goes on to price. Price, uh, number of containers or parts of container to make one liter. Number to make one liter and price for one liter. Okay, and as you know, the big L, capital L, is our symbol for liter, okay? So in this case, we're going with liters. If you want to do unit price, you could have picked milliliters, you could pick anything, but they're asking us to do it in liters, so let's do that. So the first one, container size, okay? You can see there the first one is four liters, okay? You can see it in the picture, it's four liters is the size. Uh, so let's just stick with that one for a minute. What's the price? It tells us right there it's 525. Okay, 525. That's eh, it's a little cheaper than we get milk for right now, but not that far off. Uh, and number to make one liter. So in this case, it could be, it says number of containers or parts of container. So how many parts of a four liter um, would it take to make one liter? It's one quarter, right? That's one quarter of four liters is just the one, all right? So one out of four parts. Uh, now, next it says price for one liter. And the way we get the price for one liter, maybe we'll, we'll come back to that. Let's go to the next one. Okay, next one says it's one liter. It's one liter. Okay. And it costs $1.89. And then it says number to make one liter. It, it already is, right? That is one liter. So just one of it would be one liter. Uh, this one's easy. We'll just, <laughs> how much would one liter be? One liter, they told us right here. It's 189. Okay, so we'll leave that. Next one, it's uh, 500 milliliters. Okay, and we know how many milliliters are in one liter? A thousand. Okay, we know that from some of our previous units. So if we have 500 milliliters, right, that would be half of a liter, okay, because we know one liter is a thousand. So a thousand, 500 is half of that. 
Okay, we'll get to that. So the price they tell us for that is $1.05. Okay, and how many of these would it take to make up a liter? Two, right? We would need two of them. Okay. Uh, next, it says price for one liter. We'll get back to that. Okay, the last one was 250 milliliters. Okay, and that price they give us, a dollar or 75 cents, sorry. And how many of these do we need to make one liter? We need four of them, don't we? Because we know 250 to get up to 1,000, right? 1,000 is one liter, divided by 250 is four, right? So if we had four of those, we'd have one liter. Okay, let's go back and do our pricing now. Okay, we know that one quarter of this, okay, is a liter. So you could either you can do this. You can either take this price and multiply it by one over four, okay, which is the same as if I took 525 and I multiplied by one over four, that's the same as really taking 525 and dividing it by four, right? And that makes sense. I know most of you would know that right off the bat. You just divide it into four because there are four parts. Okay? And when you take 525 divided by four, you get $1.31. Okay. Uh, let's see, look at one down below. Okay, this one in this case, okay, you've got 500 milliliters, and we said we need two parts, right? So we would multiply, okay, just like we could have multiplied by the one over four, we'll multiply by two, because that would give us the part per liter. So 105 multiplied by two gives us, of course, 210. Okay. And something you're going to notice right away is, and this is typically the way it is, not always, you do need to check, but typically the more you buy of something, the cheaper per uh, unit it is, okay? So, so far that's the pattern we're seeing. We would expect that to buy the 250 milliliters, um, if you were going to get that into a liter, would be even more expensive than 210. So let's see. If we take this, same thing, we're going to multiply because we need four of them to make up a liter. And we would get $3. Okay, so that's kind of the answers here if you were going to fill out this chart. So you can see what we did there. We multiplied by 1 over 4, or that's the same as dividing by 4. This one we kept the same, right? It already told us what it is for a liter. This one we multiplied by 2 to get to the liter. This one we multiplied by 4 to get up to a liter. And we'd see our prices. So again, remember, this is the price per 1 liter. Okay. All right. So let's go on to number. Oh, number four says list the unit price of the four. We did that uh, from most expensive to least expensive. So most expensive is here. Okay. And it would go in this order to least expensive. Uh, and then it says, which size has the lowest unit price? So which size of these? It was four liters has the lowest unit price. Now, again, if you walked into the store and you bought the four liter, you're going to spend the most money if you just bought that one thing. But if you need that amount, right, if you need four liters, this would be the way to do it, right? You wouldn't go in there and uh, you'd have to buy 16 of these to get up to four liters. That would get ex really expensive, wouldn't it? Okay. Um, doing this times 16. All right. So number five says, reflect. Some products are available in different variety of brands and they've got different pictures. And here, in Nova Scotia, we have Scottsburn, we have Farmers. I don't know if we have any other choices, but we do have different brands. So it says, does brand affect the quality of a product? Explain. So maybe for some reason you like one milk brand better than the other. Myself, I don't notice any difference. Oh, did I say Scottsburn? Farmers? Anyway. Uh, so maybe you like a brand better, you find it tastes better, or maybe you like what the company stands for, or you have a family connection, or maybe the company gives a lot of money to a charity that you like. So, um, so brand, so it can affect the quality of the product and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you'll even see a no name brand and a name brand and actually they're made in the same company and they're the exact same product, but they package them differently for different reasons. So sometimes brand does, sometimes it doesn't. There might be same with, we could talk about this about shoes or clothing or, you know, sometimes you pay a bit more for a more expensive brand and it is worth it. Or sometimes you're just paying to have that cool name on your clothes, right? Okay, so this one it says in B, 
how might a choice of brands influence what you consider to be the best buy? And we kind of just talked about that a little bit. Um, now, just a point about this milk. Um, sometimes the best price isn't the best price for you. The best price for you, and it may not be the best price for you. And I kind of mentioned that. So let's just say you don't drink much milk. You're doing, you're doing some baking and you literally only need 250 milliliters of milk and you will never use any more of that milk because you don't drink milk, you just need it for this recipe. The best buy for you would be to buy the 250 milliliters, wouldn't it? Because you're just going to throw the rest out. So why would you want to spend, even though you're spending more per, per unit, um, this is still the best price for you because if you went and bought the four liters, you're only using 250 milliliters, the rest will go bad and you'll throw it out and it's heavy to carry. It's just a waste, right? So you have to think about the purpose of why you're buying something. So what is the best price for you in that case? Um, and that's what number six talks about. It says the best buy might be of a size that cannot be used up by the expiry date. How would this affect what you consider to be the best buy, right? Or let's say for some reason you're at the store and they, you know, you drink a little bit of milk, but not a lot. And you'll probably go through maybe 500 milliliters in the next week. And you look at the expiry dates and, you know, after that, after a week, these ones would be, you won't drink it and they'll be old. Say the expiry date is a week for all of them. You're better off buying this one, right? Because you'll just end up throwing the extra milk away. And that's a waste and not worth it. You'll have to go buy some more the next week. So pay attention to those kind of things as well. All right, so I'm gonna stop at that and assign you some questions. So a lot of this is really kind of common sense and thinking and if you've done any type of grocery shopping at all yet, um, you're probably kind of used to looking at this kind of thing. One interesting thing to note, and I know we were hoping to go to the grocery store together, but that's not the case. Um, a lot of products will actually have on the little, the little barcode where they say the price on the shelf, they'll actually say the unit price for you. So you don't have to get out your calculator and do it. They don't always, but sometimes they will say that. So you can compare to two different products if they sell the same thing. Um, okay, so for your assignment, I want you to do the check your understanding. Check your understanding. This is on page 12. Okay, these are all great questions. I'm just going to assign one through five for you to kind of look at and do, but I am going to say or more, okay, because they're all, they're all great. Um, the answers are in the back of the book as well, so you can check those out. Um, if you have any questions at all, please let me know and I'd be happy to go over them. Have a great day.